from the reasons we would do it to what life would be like under the sea. Join us as we explore the question of what if we colonize the oceans? Number 7. The Ocean's Deep Before asking the question of what if, we need to ask the question of why would we? Why would we go and leave our places above the waves to go live either on top of them or beneath them? Isn't that too much of a risk? Well, as in all things, it depends on your perspective of the matter. The idea of ocean colonization is not a new thing. In fact, it's been something that has been theorized and debated for many years. And one of the most basic reasons for why we would consider it is, water is pretty much everywhere. Our world is made of about 71% water, which means that the part of the world that humanity lives on is about 29%. But to be honest, it's a bit lower than that, because various parts of the United States, Russia, China, many countries in Africa, and more have areas that honestly aren't inhabited by that many humans. We're more clumped together than anything else. Which brings us to why we would have colonies underwater. There would be a lot of space, much more than we have above the waters, regardless of the how, and don't worry, I'll get to that. If we were to put colonies either above or below the oceans or sea's surface, we could theoretically house a lot of people and seriously help the overpopulation problem that the Earth is currently facing on land. The Earth has almost 8 billion people on it, and it's growing in size every year. That's almost too much for our planet's lands to hold, so we need to think of an option to help maintain the population. Having colonies under the sea might just be the solution that we are looking for. And should we be able to go to all the oceans of the world and put colonies there? That would solve a lot of problems, not to mention it would be easier than other solutions floating around. 6. Space versus Water When you hear the word colonization in the modern day, you either think of past history, like the colonization of America and other nations, or you think about the prospect of space colonization. Depending on who you talk to, you would be told to believe that us colonizing a place like Mars is just a matter of time. And technically speaking, it is. We have made strides to go and colonize Mars, including finding that there is water on the red planet. But as in any venture, there are a lot of risks with doing a space mission of this nature. And when you compare colonization of Mars to colonization of the oceans of Earth, one definitely seems easier. First and foremost, it's easier to test. If you want to test something in space, you have to launch it up there via a probe or rocket, and that's not cheap. In contrast, humanity has plenty of deep-sea vehicles that are already made and can be used right now to do tests on underwater colonies and such. Second, if something goes wrong in space, the person up there basically has no help outside of mission control in their ear. In the ocean, depending on how deep you are and the size of the team with you, help is at most only minutes away. That's a big difference. Finally, to colonize space, we'd have to do a large and expensive process to not just get to Mars, but to make sure the colony is able to sustain itself via sending supplies to them. In contrast, sending people and supplies to an underwater colony or a floating colony on the ocean is relatively easy and somewhat cheap. Even some people from NASA are hesitant to say that colonizing space is in our immediate future, such as Catherine Conley, NASA's Planetary Protection Officer. She notes that colonizing the oceans is way easier than colonizing a planet like Mars. But if the idea is to construct a self-sustaining environment where humans can persist indefinitely with only modest help from Earth, then I'd say this is very far in the future, if it's possible at all," she said. She went on to make a thought-provoking comparison. We haven't bothered to colonize areas underwater on Earth yet. It's far more challenging to colonize a place where there's hardly any atmosphere at all. So as you can see, colonizing the oceans isn't just a good option. It's actually one of the best options we have right now in terms of expanding our reach. Of course, when you make a statement like that, you have to ask the question of, how would we do it? Before we answer that, if you have not already done, subscribe to the channel. That way you don't miss our weekly videos. Number 5. How would we colonize the oceans? That is the question, isn't it? 
how would we go about making life in an area where we can't breathe? Well, you need to not limit your thinking like that. First and foremost, the ocean is a dual-sided coin. There's the surface, and then there's the underwater world, both of which are viable candidates in terms of colonization. The idea of floating cities on the ocean is nothing new to be honest, and if you think about it, we've already done that in the form of ships and ocean liners. Those are technically homes, and they float on the water. The only difference with these colonies is that these would be bigger, have stores and other basic needs, and various other things that would make it a true sustainable colony. Plus, with the vastness of the ocean, again, 71% of the Earth is water, we could plop colonies all over the surface of the ocean and they would likely never touch. Or even better, we could space them out in a way that they could be a community of colonies while still being independent. Now, obviously, there would be challenges, the biggest one being buoyancy of the floating colonies. But if we can get massive cruise liners on the oceans before the age of modern technology, it's not that much of a stretch to say that we could make a floating city. It would have to be a domed city to protect it from potential violent oceans and storms, but oxygen can be easily recycled. And clean water would just be filtered from the oceans itself. True, we would need to do supply runs for these colonies in terms of food and other supplies, but if you built them big enough, we could give them their own farms and other things to help them sustain themselves. Truth be told, if we put our minds to it, we could probably make a colony on the waves in no time, maybe a few years. All it takes is a little initiative and a bank account. But for those who want a more exotic locale, four, under the sea. There are many tales in our world today about life under the waves. From the stories of Atlantis to classic movies like The Little Mermaid, many have dreamt being under the sea. But can we really live down there? Absolutely. In fact, some people are actually living under the waves right now. Sylvia Earle, who has spent more than 7,000 hours underwater, is one such person. It was glorious being able to breathe underwater, Earle said during a public panel. Being underwater still requires support, but at least it doesn't take a rocket to get you there. The blue part of the planet is accessible to pretty much everyone. Even if we weren't talking the scale of colonies, you can actually buy yourself a home right now that can be built underwater, even being about 100 feet below sea level at times. These custom homes are built to withstand the water pressure of the ocean, allow you to breathe via recycled air, and yet give you a view of the ocean around you via the sea creatures that are there. So, technically speaking, we're already colonizing the ocean. We just need to expand it a bit. But how to do that? Honestly, the same way we would make the above water colonies, by making domed areas that we would put underwater, which is actually a visual that has been done many times over the years including versions of Atlantis via DC Comics. And like those visions of the fictional nation, we could expand our colonies the same way. We would start out with a large domed city, then via tubes make expansions for new homes or suburbs, if you will, that would connect to the main city. Plus, unlike Atlantis, we wouldn't need to go too deep if we didn't want to. Even a couple hundred feet under the waves features plenty of rooms to colonize. We have the means, and as many are finding out, there are benefits to the world at large by looking under the ocean for our next expansion. Number 3. Clean Energy, Clean Planet One of the biggest concerns in regards to the underwater colonies we could make is the question of power. We obviously wouldn't use engine power because we'd either be polluting the dome or polluting the waters. However, some very smart scientists have figured out that between the water of the oceans and the Earth's core, we wouldn't be starved for power one bit. First and foremost, the ocean has thermal vents that are outlets for the Earth's core. These geothermal vents have long been considered one of the most natural sources of energy on the planet because it comes from the Earth itself and we wouldn't need to do too much to use it. So by placing a colony on top of or near a vent, the Earth's core could power a colony all on its own. Then there's the water. While it may not seem like it at times, the waters of our world are powered by currents and tides. So, not unlike hydroelectric power via dams, we can use those powerful currents to create power via turbines. Some scientists are already doing this via sea kites. They're attached to a main area then raised into the currents. The water turns the turbines on the kites and power is directed back to the generator. 
So if you put a colony in an area with good currents and make sure you follow them in terms of shifting in place, you could have plenty of power. Another beneficial possibility that could come from Earth colonizing its waters is the fact that it would require people both above and below water to make sure that they aren't polluting the water further. As you likely know, there is a ton of waste and plastics and pollution gumming up the oceans of the planet right now, including a literal island of trash in the Pacific Ocean. Should the colonization of the oceans happen, humanity would first need to clean up its oceans to a reasonable degree, especially in regards to that island of trash. This could lead to new inventions and methods of getting rid of trash without polluting or stockpiling in landfills. If enough people got behind it, the oceans could be clean in years and not decades like it's looking now. Looking at this from a different angle, if a bunch of people started living underwater, that could mean that the gas emissions of the planet would go down, in theory. Right now, gas being poured into the atmosphere is causing the planet to warm up. So if even a somewhat small fraction of the planet's population went underwater, that could lessen the blow. It wouldn't stop it, but it would help. Regardless of how you look at it, not only could going underwater help the population, it could help the planet. 2. A Closer Look at the New World You might think that with all the technology that we have, that we know just about everything about the oceans of the planet, when in fact, we've only mapped out about 5% of the ocean's waters in good detail. That's not a lot. But by putting colonies under the ocean's surface, not only could people go and study the fish and plant life in the waters, the colonies themselves would provide an excellent harbor for those who try and explore it. Think about it. You could literally have a domed city of just oceanographers and scientists dedicated to learning more about the oceans. It would be a literal home base full of submarines and other equipment that they could use to map out the oceans more, study the life of the waters, and just learn about the oceans more in general. And for the regular people, they'll get to basically live in an aquarium of sorts if you think about it. If they're careful, they could make suits to let them go swim with certain fish. It would be a unique experience and one that I bet many would want to try. Number 1. Uncertainty of the Depths Naturally, with any endeavor of this grand in nature, there are going to be problems that we will need to solve. The water pressure issue is one that we can solve easily via various materials, but how long they would hold up is not known. And while we may have the power issue worked out, if someone was to happen to them, it would put the colony at risk. And to that, the question of resources, how the colonies would function in terms of hierarchy and more questions would need to be answered. But that's also what makes such a venture exciting. Figuring out these solutions and getting one step closer to finding what it would be like to live in the waters of the ocean. Many truly think that this is the next frontier for humanity. All we have to do is take the next step towards it. Thanks for watching, everyone. What do you think about the possibility of colonizing the oceans? Do you think it's something that'll happen soon? Would you want to be part of an underwater colony? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time on the channel.